Hello, beautiful friends. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. It is time for a March book haul. So today I have what should be a pretty short book haul and then a tiny little baby unhaul. I only have a couple of books that I'm unhauling this month. Originally I was planning to do bi-monthly book hauls, but I actually have quite a fair stack for you today and I wasn't sure how many I was actually going to acquire in April, so I wanted to go ahead and just do the book haul for you now in March. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with perhaps what is the most extravagant book purchase I've ever made in my entire life. I'm not gonna tell you how much it was because it is ridiculous, but I basically had to have it especially after finishing Dark Dawn. This is something that was released at some point in 2022 and it was already on my radar and it was something that I had originally wanted but I couldn't justify the expense and let me be honest I cannot justify it now but after finishing Dark Dawn I was just like so emotional and so devastated by the ending of that story and just missing the character so much that I was like you know what screw it I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a little retail therapy and I'm going to get this and that is the special edition of the Nevernight Chronicles by Lit Joy. So I don't know if you can see but there's like a little Nevernight Chronicles plot here and each of these books is actually annotated by Jay Kristoff and that's what really really sold me because if I ever decide to read these books I can go through and see some of his annotations let me go ahead and pull them out also just on the box I don't know if you're going to be able to see but there's a little um, Corberry crest here and then it comes with this little book holder the crest is also on the sides here and then it says the Nevernight Chronicles on the back like I said I don't know if you're going to be able to see that and I can't tell whether it's pulling up on camera or not but it is just fantastic I plan on keeping it in the box on my shelves like this. So here is Nevernight. On the front is this beautiful crow design. I'm just going to keep holding these up and hope that you can see them. <laughs> hope that I can tell in editing whether or not you can see them. I don't know. I don't think you can. But it also has Never Flinch and these red sprayed edges here. Here are the end papers for this one. It also has art throughout. Let me see if I can find one. Look at that. Like, guys, look how stunning that is. I was kind of scrolling through and reading some of the annotations randomly, and he actually does have annotations in here about why he decided to do the footnotes, which I thought was fantastic because a lot of people's complaints about these stories are the footnotes. So let me just read you this really quick. It says, so why did I use the damn footnotes? One, because not everyone likes super detailed world building. And if you don't either, you can skip them and not miss any story. So that is true. When you're reading the Nevernight Chronicles, you don't actually have to read the footnotes. You will not miss absolutely anything and I will say that if you listen to these via audio the footnote part is put in seamlessly within the narrative of the story so you don't even know that you're listening to the footnotes being read. Two to make you laugh because this is a very heavy book and that's true the footnotes were super hilarious. Three metaplot reasons to remind you of the narrator constantly and then four because I'm a winker who likes to be different. It truly was the annotations that got me just knowing that I would be able to go through and read Jay Kristoff's notes about this brilliant world that he created it just it got me it made me pull the plug on this beautiful, beautiful series. This is God's Grave. It's got Eclipse there on the front, and then it says Never Fear on the edges. And then, of course, Dark Dawn has our favorite, Mr. Kindly, there on the front, and then it says Never Forget. Oh, these are just so beautiful. I'm so, so happy to have these despite the expense. Oh my gosh, they're so fantastic. Another beautiful special edition that I got was the Fairy Loot special edition of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It comes in this beautiful slip case that makes really great ASMR sounds, I feel like. It's a naked hardcover, so there is no actual dust jacket on the cover here. It's got gold foil on the edges, and then it says, never let anyone make you feel ordinary. It is signed by Taylor Jenkins Reid. She is one of my favorite authors, so I am very glad to have this one. Then I have The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. This is just a dust jacket because I'm currently in the process of reading this. This is the book that I have to read for Slayer Fest as the largest book on my TBR and since it's over a thousand pages and I know that it's going to take me a very long time to get to this I decided to go ahead and just start it now so that I could plug away at this. This of course is an adult high epic fantasy. I'm not even going to try to explain to you what this book is about. I'm a hundred pages in and I still don't know what this book is about and the complexity of it is beyond anything that I've ever read before even beyond Game of Thrones. Like Game of Thrones I feel is a cakewalk compared to this especially if you have watched the first season of Game of Thrones before or diving into the first book of Game of Thrones. I don't have anything like that with this. So believe me when I tell you that I have been studying the wiki for The Way of King as I'm reading this because there is a lot to this book y'all but so far I'm actually really enjoying it and I'm really enjoying taking my time with it and fully immersing myself in this world and like getting to know all the characters and the magic systems and the history 
date and everything like that. I have been taking notes. I have been studying y'all for this book. So I hope that I will be able to continue on and actually complete this by the end of Slayer Fest. So a pretty random acquisition for March was Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh. This was published 10 years ago now. So this book is 10 years old and it's been quite popular ever since. It's never something that I had any interest in reading. However, from one of the challenges that I'm trying to satisfy for 2023, I have to read a book that was written by a comedian and she's not like a stand-up comedian or anything like that, but she created an award-winning blog that is pretty comical and has all of her like little funny little comic strips that are going on in here. And so I thought that this would be the perfect read and it's likely also going to be fairly quick because like I said it is just a lot of comic strips and things like that and I believe this focuses heavily on like mental health. I picked this up now because originally I was going to read it for a Slayer Fest prompt to read a short or quick book but I ended up replacing that with something else but now I do have this for when I am ready to read it but I did pick this up with the intention of reading it sooner rather than later but now it is going to be on the later end. Next, I did pick up a copy of Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is a book that I read in February. And of course, I absolutely loved it. Y'all know how I feel about Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is a historical fiction that follows Carrie Soto, who retired as the basically the best tennis player in the entire world. But now there is somebody who is out to defeat her record. And Carrie Soto is not having that. So this book shows her as she's trying to come out of retirement and keep her record. And this, of course, is just a very excellent character study about Carrie Soto, who is a very determined, ambitious, definitely an arrogant type of person. And I really, really enjoyed this. Tennis, of course, is featured very heavily in here, but I still think that you can enjoy this even if you don't like tennis. And even though it goes very deeply into like tennis strategies and things like that, you're able to picture everything that is happening in your mind. Taylor Jenkins Reid just has this wonderful ability of making that happen. And of course, I gave this a strong, solid four-star read. I just love Taylor Jenkins Reid and basically everything she does. And this one was no different, so I had to have it. And then I finally got my February adult book-only box from Fairy Loop. This was the very first one that I received received since subscribing. So I only just now got this book. This is a book that was never on my radar. It wasn't something I was ever going to read, but I think I have to now because of how beautiful this book is. That is The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. I mean, can you even with this book? I mean, look at those edges, y'all. And just wait until you see the map in this book. The map is flipping foiled. Like I, I just cannot even, and check out the naked hardcover. It is just one of the most beautiful books that I have ever seen in my entire life. It is a pirate epic fantasy, so it says, Amina al Sarafi has survived backstabbing rogues, vengeful merchant princes, several husbands, and one actual demon to retire peacefully with her family to a life of piety, motherhood, and absolutely nothing that hints of the supernatural. But when she's offered a job no bandit could refuse, she jumps at the chance for one final adventure with her old crew that will make her a legend and offers a fortune that will secure her and her family's future forever. Yet the deeper Amina dives, the higher the stakes, for there's always risk in wanting to become a legend, to seize one chance at glory, to savor just a bit more power, and the price might be your very soul. So I am now officially very excited to have this one, especially seeing as how beautiful it is. I will absolutely at least be giving it a try because I think this is one I'm going to want to keep on my shelves for sure. Next, I have Missing Pieces by Heather Gutenkopf. This is one that I read earlier in March, and I recently just did a full review of this book in my recent reads video, so I will be sure to link that down below for you if you want to check it out. So I'm not going to say much about it here, but this is an adult suspense thriller that follows a woman who was uncovering a lot of lies that her husband told her about the death of his parents and she is determined to uncover what actually happened to his parents. Was he involved? Who could have done this? And things of that nature. Overall, this was a pretty solid reading experience for me. I gave it a 3.5 stars. Another one I just recently wrapped up was The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This was sent to me as part of the monthly Facebook gifting group that I am a part of on Facebook and this was phenomenal. I gave this a 4.5 stars. I was not expecting to love this book as much as I did, but Grady Hendrix just has such a phenomenal ability to balance horror with humor, serious with cheesy and things like that. I just think he does it so, so well. And I remember just being done with this book and I could not stop thinking about it. That's why it got a 4.5 stars for me. It didn't get a five just because I didn't really feel an emotional connection to the book. But overall, this was just so solid and I'm very, very excited to read more from him in the future. Then for March's Aardvark Book Club, I decided to get For Her Consideration by Amy Spaulding. This is a sapphic romance that I'm going to give a shot. I've never read anything by Amy Spaulding. I'm a little bit skeptical as to whether or not I will enjoy this. It definitely sounds very rom-com-y but it also sounds sweet and kind of heartwarming and so I want to go ahead and give it a chance. This was really the only one of their March selections that really appealed to me which is why I selected it in the first place so we're gonna see it. I'm going to give it a go. Then moving on to the book of the month selections that I made for March one of the first ones was Wayward by Amelia Hart. I mean can you even with this cover y'all it is absolutely stunning and at first I wasn't even going to bother with this one because magical realism isn't my thing. I seem to be able to only read books that are either firmly grounded in reality or that 
are fully fantastical. Like reading a book that's set in the real world with magical elements doesn't always work for me. Sometimes I find them a little bit too abstract, a little bit too weird. But I was reading the synopsis of this and it sounds very beautiful, very atmospheric, very witchy. And that's kind of what sold me. It's actually set in three different timelines that span 500 years, which was also something very intriguing. It says 2019, under cover of darkness, Kate flees London for ramshackle wayward cottage inherited from a great aunt she barely remembers. With its tumbling ivy and overgrown garden, the cottage is worlds away from the abusive partner who tormented Kate. But she soon suspects that her great aunt had a secret, one that lurks in the bones of the cottage, hidden ever since the witch hunts of the 17th century. And then in 1619, Altha is awaiting trial for the murder of a local farmer who was stampeded to death by his herd. When Altha was a girl, her mother taught her their magic, a kind not rooted in spell casting, but in a deep knowledge of the natural world. But unusual women have always been deemed dangerous. And as the evidence of witchcraft is laid out against Altha, she knows it will take all her powers to maintain her freedom. And then the final perspective actually takes place in 1942 during World War II. Violet is trapped in her family's grand crumbling estate, straight jacketed by societal convention. She longs for the robust education her brother receives and for her mother, long deceased, who was rumored to have gone mad before her death. The only traces Violet has of her are a locket bearing the initial W and the word wayward scratched into the baseboard of her bedroom. Weaving together the stories of three extraordinary women across five centuries, Wayward is an astonishing debut and an enthralling novel of female resilience. So overall, the story seems beautiful. The cover is beautiful. I am absolutely going to be giving this one a chance. Then the other one I selected was The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. I almost always decide to select the thrillers that Book of the Month puts out just because that is my jam. That is my thing. And because also they tend to pick really solid thrillers. I have never read anything by Sally Hepworth before, but I'm going to give her a shot because this was a Book of the Month selection for March. My understanding of this is it follows a couple and they seem to be living their dream life. They have this beautiful cottage that overlooks a cliff, but the cliff has become notorious for people taking their own lives. And the main characters, Pippa and Gabe, Gabe is always trying to go out there and save their lives, prevent them from jumping. Until one night he doesn't. One night, I believe it's a woman, dives to her death and it comes out that Gabe actually knew this woman. And a lot of questions start to arise about whether Gabe actually tried to prevent her from killing herself, whether Gabe might have been involved in her death and things of that nature. So this is definitely a very domestic suspense thriller and I'm here for it. So we're going to give Sally Hepworth a shot with this one. And then there were a few add-ons that I went ahead and decided to grab. One of them is very, very old. It's been on there for a while, but I never grabbed it for now. That is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. You'll know how much I really enjoy Lisa Jewell. She has now become an auto buy thriller suspense author for me and they still had some of her backlist on there from many, many years ago. So I wanted to go ahead and grab this since a lot of the Lisa Jewell books that I do have are in book of the month editions. I don't know what this is about. I don't need to know what it's about. It's Lisa Jewell. I will read it and I will almost assuredly enjoy it. And then one that I actually recently talked about in a 2023 release video. I have some questions for you by Rebecca Mackay. This actually really piqued my interest because it definitely sounds like it's going to have like a true crime podcast element to it, possibly a wrongful conviction, which absolutely piqued my interest. So I went ahead and grabbed this one because I did mention it in a recent video. It is on my radar. It sounds absolutely phenomenal right up my alley and we're going to go ahead and give this a try. I also picked up Georgie All Along by Kate Claiborne. So this is a contemporary, but it seems like it's going to be harder hitting, which is definitely what I want in the contemporaries that I read. I don't read as many contemporaries these days as I used to because I don't want fluffy. I definitely want substance. So whether it's a romance, whether it's just a contemporary story, it doesn't matter. It has to have those harder hitting like gut punch elements for me. And it seems like that's what this has. It says longtime personal assistant Georgie Mulcahy has made a career out of putting others before herself. When an unexpected upheaval sends her away from her hectic job in LA and back to her hometown, Georgie must confront an uncomfortable truth. Her own wants and needs have always been a disconcertingly blank page. But then Georgie comes across a forgotten art, a friend fix diary she wrote as a teenager, filled with possibilities she once imagined. To an overwhelmed Georgie, the diary's simple small scale ideas are a lifeline, a guidebook for getting started on a new path. Georgie's plans hit a snag when she comes face to face with an unexpected roommate, Levi Fanning, one time town troublemaker and current town hermit. But this quiet grouchy man is more than his reputation and he offers to help Georgie with her quest. As the two make their way through her wish list, Georgie begins to realize that what she truly wants might not be in the pages of her diary after all, but right by her side. If only they can both find a way to let go of the pasts that hold them back. Honest and deeply emotional, Georgie all along is a smart, tender must read for everyone who's ever wondered about the life that got away. So I'm already getting a lot of character driven vibes from this. It says it's deeply emotional and that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm looking forward to. I've seen some really great reviews for this one as well. I haven't actually heard anybody talk about this one in the online bookish community, but I have high hopes for it. So I'm glad to have snagged this one. I also went ahead and picked up Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. This is one that I read, I think it was in early February and I really loved this. This was a suspense thriller that deals with time and going back in time to prevent a crime from taking place. And I just thought the way that it was done was really creative. I thought that it was engaging. It was page turning. I wanted to know what happened. I wanted to constantly be in the story to figure out what was going to happen. And so I knew that I had to have this on 
on my shelves. This was the very first one that I've ever read by Jillian McAllister and it certainly will not be my last. And then the final book that I have to haul for you today is actually another Grady Hendrix and that's How to Sell a Haunted House. This is another one that was sent to me from that Facebook gifting group. So I received this as part of the normal monthly gifting and then the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I believe that was what the one that was sent to me as a birthday gift. So in the month of March, both books that were sent to me were actually Grady Hendrix and I'm not mad about it. This is actually going to be the perfect book to satisfy one of the prompts for my Slayer Fest readathon to read a horror and this is absolutely what I'm going to be reading because I'm excited. I'm hyped to read more from Grady Hendrix. This I believe is about a house that doesn't want to be sold. It says when Louise finds out that her parents have died, she dreads going home. She doesn't want to leave her daughter with her ex and fly to Charleston. She doesn't want to deal with her family home, stuffed to the rafters with remnants of her father's academic career and her mother's lifelong obsession with puppets and dolls, which right there is like super creepy. Most of all, she doesn't want to deal with her brother Mark, who never left their hometown, gets fired from one job after another and resents her success. Unfortunately, she'll need his help to get the house ready for sale because it'll take more than some new paint on the walls and clearing out a lifetime of memories to get this place on the market. But some houses don't want to be sold and Louise and Mark's home has other plans for both of them. Like I said, I am super hyped for this one. I cannot wait to get to it. Grady Hendrix is quickly becoming an auto buy author for me and I'm super excited to read this one. All right, y'all. And then I just have a couple of books here to unhaul. Not a lot at all. These are books that I've just recently decided that I no longer want to read and I no longer want to keep on my shelves. First one that I have here is You'll Be the Death of Me by Karen and McManus. I actually got this recently. I think it was like in a Black Friday haul from Book Outlet because I was like, you know what? I've enjoyed Karen and McManus in the past. I think she writes pretty solid YA thrillers. The fact of the matter is, is that I'm not looking forward to reading this. I'm not looking forward to anything with a YA designation. There was like a switch that flipped in my head where I have just been completely uninterested in anything related to YA. I am reading a bit of YA this year to finish up some series that I've had in progress for many years, but actively pursuing new series in YA or just pursuing new books in general in YA is not really what I'm going for anymore. And so even though I had high hopes for this one and I think that it could be something that I still enjoy, the fact is that the anticipation to read it is just not there. I'm probably more anxious to read it than anything. And so I just feel like that's a sign that it needs to go. So it's going to be put up on Pango. Similarly, I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Little Do We Know by Tamara Ireland Stone. I got this because I love Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. That was the very first and last book that I read by her, but it was so incredibly powerful. It was a YA contemporary that dealt heavily with mental illness and it was so beautifully done. And there was a sweet romance in there as well. And it was hard hitting and I just loved everything about it. But I read that book when I was still very much invested and into YA. I think I read it in 2016 or 2017. And I don't even know if I were to read it today, if I would still have the same feelings for it as I did then. And even though I have no doubt that this book is going to be just as beautifully written and hard hitting because I believe this deals with a fractured friendship and like them coming together. And I have heard literally nothing but amazing things about this book. And because I love every last word so much, I, I had to have this. Like this has been on my radar since it came out, I think in 2018, but I'm not excited to read it. As much as I think that I will enjoy the story overall, it's not in the direction that I'm heading at this point. And because of that, I think I just need to pass it along to somebody who could love it more than me. For right now, I just don't think that I need to hang on to this anymore. And this next one actually should have been included in the last book on haul that I did. I just forgot that it was there sitting on my shelves in holidays by Christina Lauren. Y'all know that I've basically given up on Christina Lauren at this point. I could definitely keep this on my shelves as a good time, like going into it knowing that I'm not going to really get much out of it, that it's just going to be a cute, fun holiday read. But I'm not really interested in the Groundhog Day type trope. In fact, I actively mostly avoid books with that type of trope. And since I'm just really not invested or interested in Christina Lauren as an author anymore, I think it's okay for me to go ahead and let this one go as well. So all of the other books that I have been unhauled by them have been up on Pango. Some have already sold and this one will be next. And then last, I'm going to be unhauling the entirety of The Remnant Chronicles by Mary Pearson. So I actually only have one book left in this series to finish, The Beauty of Darkness. But this is another situation where this is a young adult fantasy. This is not one that has ever blown my mind. They were good, fun times. The only reason why I read The Kiss of Deception was because it was a book club pick for Chelsea Palmer years ago and I decided to go ahead and continue. But it has been years since I read the second book. I don't really have any momentum to continue. I don't have any interest to continue. I don't care if I ever know what happens in this series. That's how uninvested I am in it. And even though I do have this one last book to read, I just don't think I need to do it. So even though this was a book on my 23 and 23 list, I'm going to go ahead and unhaul it, get rid of it, call it a day on this one because life is too short to waste it on books that you really don't want to read. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are all the books that I've hauled and unhauled in the month of March. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books that I've hauled and what your thoughts are. I would love to know. Please also let me know some of your favorite acquisitions from the month of March. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and a third video to film. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.